And next on the list is how to approach front and back layers in Affinity Designer. So let's get started. Okay, so here is an unfinished Angie comic I was working on about two years ago. So I'll just uh, show these layers. Well, not that one. Okay, so Molly walks through the door, says, is what? Is, Sammy, Dad says you have to come downstairs and meet the babysitter. Let's go. I will after the show is over. But it's a girl. What does she look like? Okay, so notice how I had Molly just walk through the door like this. And this doorway is one object. Now there are a couple of ways you can do that. All right now, the first and most obvious way to do that is when she's right here, you can make a mask on her. Have these lines like right on the edge of the doorway. I mean that's one way to do it but I don't like doing it this way because now if we move Molly it will look something like this and then I have to delete the mask and make the mask all over again. So that is one way. Another way is this. I can copy this object and copy this right down here. And now I'm going to make a new layer above Molly. Oh, this is actually called doorway. So right above, paste. And now right here, I'm going to break a curve, break a curve. And I'm going to delete this object. And now she goes in and out just like that. And now there is one last way. What I showed you originally, now I'm going to show you how you can do that. Now when I made a mask, see how I have Molly in a layer called Doorway? If you make the mask on Molly herself, then it you've run to that first original problem I showed you. You need to make a mask on a layer nested above the character layer. Oh, wrong way. Right, and you know, I'll just have That way she can travel all around the room. Alright, now I can't select the doorway layer and have her roam around. I have to go under, select the Molly layer, and now she can go in, in and out of the door. So that's how I did that. When working with front layers and back layers in vector design, a common struggle is working with front hair and back hair. So here are some example of so here are some examples of different female characters I created because my female characters tend to have longer hair than my male characters. So let's look at how I made the hair for each of these characters here. Starting with Angie Notice that I, let's open the layers, I separated top hair and back hair with uh, two different layers. So the top hair is kind of like her front bangs and then the back hair is behind the head layer. So if I just 
look at the top layer, press Alt and click the layer. Oop. See that I have a curve as a partially closed path and then it closes on this end over here because the area it closes it's uh, matched with the back here over here and actually this should be this should come up just a little so the top is aligned with the back here but in other examples you may need masking and I did have to mask this character over here so let's take a look at how I made her so I'm gonna open this layer and I made a mask on the front hair layer and again the front hair is in front of the head layer and the back hair is behind the head layer so if I open this layer go down I see I made a mask on the curve at the very bottom of the front hair layer so I'm gonna click that mask and delete and now this is what the curve looked like originally and again I had the front hair align exactly with the back hair so let's say I want to um, do this again so I'm gonna take this curve right here because I want her head to go behind this curve this is her front bang so the way I'm gonna do that I'm gonna drag this down over here to make a duplicate or you could just do command J or control J for Windows and now I'm gonna hide this layer for now I'm gonna select this one and now continuing from the endpoint with the pen tool oh and the stroke is thicker because I have an outline effect for this character so I'm gonna do that reverse the stroke to fill and now I'm gonna mask it right here I'm not gonna mask it over here I'm gonna mask it right here and now I get this look and the reason I made a duplicate of this line is because now that I have this I could show that copy I made that way you don't have the gap space so that's how you would go about making front hair and back hair oh and something I forgot to say the reason I create front hair and back hair and the reason I don't just have one hair layer and then put the head on top in this shape is because maybe I want to make her hair longer for example so then I would select the back hair layer and then I could just resize and then just make adjustments I like doing it this way better so I don't have to select every object that makes up her hair transform the nodes it's such it's a lot simpler and I just like doing it this way better but whatever works for you you know everyone's different okay now let's go into this other character Sophie now here I did things a little differently you'll see that there is actually no front hair layer there's really no uh, she doesn't have a front bang all I had was a back hair layer so let's take a look at how I did this one now open the head layer and if I scroll to the very bottom I made a mask so click the mask click delete now this probably looks very confusing right okay well this is what I did I selected this object duplicated it so I'm gonna hide uh, this bottom one for right now oh no not the bottom one the top one I'm gonna hide the top one now select this curve add a node right here break delete that curve add a node right here break and delete that curve and now I'm gonna select this 
Oh, and just so you know, in the new Affinity Designer beta, uh, if you uh, select a path, you have to press Command to continue from its endpoint, or Control for Windows. It was just that little thing that was added. Uh, some people were confused about how to continue a path from the endpoint with the pen tool, so that's how you do that. Okay, now I'm going to reverse this. Do that. And then again, that's why I made a duplicate. duplicate. And then just add that line again. Although I'm going to just make one adjustment. And while the pen tool is selected, I'm going to hold Command or Control for Windows. So the No tool is in action. Just bring that up. And how does it look down here? It look, looks good down there. Okay, so that's how I did that. And now for this character, this is when things got a little more difficult. So with Brenda, I'm going to open up the layers. Oh, I already had a front hair selected. Alright, so I'm going to open that. And so let's take a look at how I made this. If I select the front bang, I see that I kind of have another front bang here, which is part of her front hair layer. So this is when things got a little confusing. So I'm going to scroll down, delete that mask, and now let's take a look at how I set this up. This layer is a partially closed path that closes up here, but I wanted this area over here to be open so it looks like the back hair layer is part of, is part of the front hair layer. So what I did here, I copied this curve and and when I copied the curve, uh, let me, uh, when I copied the curve, I deleted some nodes, I broke the curves and I ended up with this curve. And the reason I copied the curve and not just make a new one is because I wanted wanted the next curve to match exactly um, the her front hair. So this is the copy I made. And so when I make a mask, I want this curve to show again so you don't get that gap space. So now when I create the mask, I'm going to duplicate this again. And which one are we starting from? The top or the bottom? We're going to start from the bottom because we're going to make the mask out of the bottom one and the top curve is the one that's going to be hiding the gap space. So I'm going to just hide this curve for now. And now when I create the mask, I'm going to hold command. And we're not going to be going this way. We're going to be going this way because we want to make a mask over this top hair layer, which means we want this area to be hiding. So let me just show you what I mean, for example. Let's go this way, just so you kind of understand what I'm talking about, because this is probably getting confusing. Okay, fill the stroke. And now, I'm not going to bring the mask over here. I'm going to bring the mask... Come on, down, down. Oh, hold on, I can't... Oh, right there. Oh no, my mistake. The front here. Okay, so now we have that gap space. I'm going to show this line. And see how this line it is um, visible? So I'm going to select the mask. And that's why I said we need to go up. So I'm going to take this node go that way instead. And that is how you do that. For dresses, skirts, or even robes for that matter, I do the same thing. I have a front layer and a back layer. So here, the dress is one layer and I have 
and underdress for the back layer. But there are some examples where masking may be needed. Okay, so here's a silly example of a girl kind of parachuting with a dress. And if I look at the layers, I'll see that I have a front dress layer, whoop, and a back dress layer. And if I look at just both um, those layers, I'll see that I have them very close together. So the end of the front dress layer your, is, um, is, in, is in the same direction of the back dress layer. They align, that's, that's the word I was looking for. They align exactly. So, and if I select both these layers, I can move them at the same time. And so it looks like that, so you can't really tell that there is an opening anywhere. And it's because I used a mask. So if I expand this layer, I see that I made a mask on the front dress layer. So I'm gonna select the mask icon and click delete. Okay, so let's figure out how we did this. So see this curve right here? I made her legs go behind this curve. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click and drag this on the new layer icon. So I have a duplicate of that. And now I'm gonna hide this upper layer. And now with this curve, I'm gonna take the pen tool Okay, so I'm making a masked region. Now I'm gonna do that. Reverse the stroke to fill. And now when I mask, I'm not gonna mask up here because I have that line. I'm gonna mask here instead. Now it looks the same, right? It looks the same as if I had the uh, mask icon right here, but it's because of this extra stroke. So once I reveal it, now it looks like one object. So that's how I did that. And now if I want to bring her dress down a little, because it does look a little high right now. <laughs> so I could do that. And that's how you would do that. <laughs> okay, this is Jolly Jelly Bean, and we are going to make it look like that he is eating this apple. So we're just going to go in front of this part of his mouth and go behind this part of his mouth. Now there are two ways of doing that, but I'm only, but just to save time in this video, I'm only going to show you one way, but let me just show you the other way, just so you know. So I'm going to just uh, briefly draw a mouth. Okay, so this is a partially closed path, and then I'll draw another layer behind the apple layer and make it look like it is part of the same object. So that is how I would do that, do that much. And then I would just create a mask 
would drag the apple inside uh, a parent layer, and then I would make a mask. Mask it right here. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to create two masks. Now this may seem a little tricky, but once you understand it, it should be easier. So I'm going to open this layer and I'm going to duplicate the mouth layer. This is going to be called outer mouth. And this is going to be inner mouth. I'm going to hide this for now. And I'm going to delete this curve. Oh no, not delete it. I'm going to just hide the fill. And get rid of that clipping object. So this object, this is one curve and this is another. I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna change this just a little. Okay, so I'm gonna break a curve right here, and I'm gonna break a curve right here. I'm gonna join these two lines together. Alright, now this line is by itself for right now, so I'm going to copy it. And now, I'm not going to touch this one, but I'm going to touch this one over here. And now I'm going to make a mask. Now, in the other videos, I showed that I was going this way, but this time I'm going to go this way instead. I mean, in the other uh, tutorials I was showing, not the other videos. All right. Now, I'm going to mask it right there. I'm going to bring this line up. And I can delete that curve right there. Now I can show this layer, and now right here I'm going to add a new layer, bring the apple inside, and now this is where I'm going to make the second mask. And now this time, I'm going to be going this way. And actually, I'm going to just move the frog's tongue inside this layer. Alright, now I'm not going to select um, this layer, but I'm going to select the apple that is nested under inside it. And now, see, it's it works.
So in this last example, we're going to make it look like this plant monster is eating this boy. Now don't worry, he doesn't actually die. So let's open these layers and see how they're organized. So if I open the plant monster layer, I'll see that the mouth layer is a separate object and the layer in the far behind is a partially closed path. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this example, I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to name this one outer mouth and this one inner mouth. Now I'm going to hide this one for now. Okay, so I need to think uh, well, like what part of the mouth do I want the boy to be in front of and what part of the mouth I want him to be behind. So this part is where I want him to be behind. So this is the only part I'm going to focus on right now. So I'm going to just remove this clipping right here and I'm going to remove this fill. So I'm going to break a curve right here and I'm going to break a curve right here. Oh no, actually, well, sorry about that. I'm going to break the other curve right here. Okay, now I can remove these paths right here. And this one. So I have just this line right now. So I'm going to duplicate this line, hide the one on the top, and now I'm going to make a mask on this line. Now, on the very bottom, that's where I'm going to make the mask. And now I can remove these other lines here. And now I can show this layer. Oops. You know what? There was one line I got rid of by mistake. So I'm actually I'm going to copy this line that's in the inner mouth layer. Command C. And I'm going to show it in the outer mouth layer. Paste. Okay. Now I have a vine a vine layer here. I can move this in between these two and now I can create a mask, another mask. And now for the boy, I'm going to kind of rotate him. Uh, just like that. Put them in between these two and again make a mask. And then if I want, I could redraw this part of the plant monster. Oh, have uh, sculpt mode enabled. Oh, and with the vines, now that you know how to do that, I'm going to just... Do something. Alt. Thank you.
Yay! <laughs>